once had roared here over these quiet fields. Pirates and buccaneers have plied these placid waters. Fairyland was an important place in the 17th and 18th centuries when Europeans were fighting for control of the Newfoundland fishery and for a toehold here on the edge of the New World. Yes, history was written here in Fairyland. Most people in Fairyland and all along this shore are descended from Irish youngsters who came here as fishermen 200 years ago. And after all these years, there's still a distinctive Irish flavor here. You can see it in the faces. You can hear it in their names and voices. Cavanaugh is a fisherman. He's also the mayor of Fairyland. It's his wedding anniversary today, so Fonce has taken a busman's holiday. The boys will haul the cod traps while he squares us out to where the other crews are fishing. Past rocks and islands we steam. Places where ancient cannons have been found half buried in the turf. Relics of Fairyland's turbulent past. Everyone was after salt cod in those days and would fight for the right to fish it. Things have mellowed a bit these days, but the cod is still king today. Han spotted a crew hauling their trap and we moved in for a closer look. of the barren hill, the old abandoned lighthouse loomed. It was only a short steam south from here to where Fonce's crew was fishing. When we were near, Fonce maneuvered his boat into position. And we were just in time to watch them haul the trap. We'd filmed a lot of empty cod traps in the north and west this year. It was heartening to see that the fishery wasn't failing everywhere. Not a big catch by any means, but some fine sized trap fish. Well, you hardly ever see that that much of the right. And that's the way it's been here this year. Few spectacular hauls, just steady fishing. A few thousand pounds here, a few thousand pounds there. With the price of fish fairly high, it adds up to a living for the fishermen of Fairyland. Franz, how does it look? Is that what you call a good haul now or just an average one? No, no, it's not even an average haul. It's, you know, if they haul the other tree and do the same as they done there, well, it'll be still a good day's pay. You know, they only got a couple thousand pounds there. But there's three more to go, and there's one probably they will get three or four thousand pounds out of it. I suppose that's the secret of it, to have three or four traps. That's right, because if you had two traps, and a lot of fellas this year that have the couple of traps is not uh, doing as good as the fellow would to train four traps. So the fish seems fairly evenly spread along yes, the shore. Yes, it is so, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not just one pile well, of fish that came in here. No, it? no. It seems to be spread out pretty good. I mean, from you, they're doing pretty good. We know they're doing real well. So, 
Good, good, good all right, you can have her. Good sign for the future. Yeah. Well, the boys are all ready to go to the other trap now. Okay. This for a wheel. I forgot about it. I had to mourn up on Hornywood trap down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boy. Once we were all clear, Franz started up, and away we went again. The crew had to steam across to see if they could haul the other traps. By now, the wind was freshening up a bit, but it was a strong tide they were more concerned over. We decided to head a bit further along the shore to see who else we could find out fishing that day. We came upon a boat with a peculiar name, Spurwink. Joy, you never thought I'd get an easy job, did you? Well, I never knows. <laughs> never knows, I. You have a nice boat, safe for bringing paddles around. Spurwink, who are these, who are these people now, from Agra Fort? Crafts from Agra Fort, yeah, Joe Craft and his boys. How much of a figure you got? <laughs> Bit of fish everywhere. Yes, there's a bit of fish right along the shore now, do you? Yeah, let's find out a fish there. Back closer to home, another trap had been dried up, and another fair haul of fish. It was indeed shaping up to be a pretty fair year for the fishermen of Fairyland. These grounds have been fished continuously now for nearly four centuries and the sea still yields its bounty. But Fairyland has another resource too, its rich, colorful past. The old lighthouse, beginning to crumble now. The historic sites, the places where the old colony was defended from French raids, Turkish pirates, and American privateers. There's still archaeological work to be done on Sir David Kirk's mansion and Lord Baltimore's plantation. Still exciting discoveries to be made here in the bottom of the harbor. Lord Baltimore was the first to settle here in the early 1600s, but eventually moved south to become the founder of the state of Maryland. There were obviously special ties between the two places, Maryland and Fairyland, and some years back, special ties developed, too, between Bernard Agresti of Maryland and Dorothy Barnable of Fairyland. They met, they married, and ever since have spent a tremendous amount of time promoting the historic ties between the two places. Well, Dorothy, this is, this is your home, is it? This is where you were born and raised? Oh, yes. <laughs> And tell me about your husband now. I believe he's from another part of the world. What, yes. what about the connection? Well, he's from Lord Baltimore's second colony, and I'm from his first. <laughs> there's, there's no question of the chicken. There's not a chicken and an egg story. We know which colony came first. Bernard, so you came here in the services, I believe? No? Yes, uh, I came here in the uh, Air Force uh, in uh, the uh, latter part of 1952. And uh, I met Dorothy in 1953. So Maryland and Maryland were finally connected again. Yes. <laughs> yes. I believe you mentioned earlier it's it's, uh, it's now in in the coat of arms of Maryland or the, the Great Seal of the State of Maryland uh, actually has a fisherman on it denoting the Avalon, which uh, Maryland was the actual settlement, and uh, has a farmer on it denoting the uh, the colony of Maryland. <laughs> How important is this, uh, Dorothy, to to Maryland? Uh, is this significant? Oh, I think it's important. Uh, a few years ago, there were busloads of tourists came into Pasadena on the West Coast because it had the same name as Pasadena, California. So I think we could make the past work for us. It could help. And uh, with tourism, it certainly it would be a big benefit to uh, to play up that particular tie. This and, is a uh, beautiful place, but it's also a very historic place. Are enough people yeah. aware of, of its importance? No, I don't think so. Uh, I'd like to see them give more attention to it than it's getting. Our lighthouse is out there. It's just, it's almost gone now. So the next question is, 
you know, will it have to be taken down? Is it going to be endangering anyone by being up? So we've applied so many times to get something done with it. We can't. And this is the way our history, something is going all the time. And you can only fight so much, you know. You want someone else, somebody, maybe on the outside, to take that interest, too. It's, it's Newfoundland history. It's not just belong to Fairyland. It's Newfoundland history we're talking about here. Fairyland. Its beauty and tranquility belies its turbulent past. For here in this peaceful, sleepy town linger stories of shipwrecks on wild winter nights and daring rescues at sea. Lords and ladies have walked these shores, and pirates and adventurers, and salty tars from all over the world. They came to fish, they came to plunder, they came to colonize and stay. Today, little remains to show the world that some of the most interesting and colorful chapters in early Canadian history happened here in quiet little Fairyland on the southern shore. a bit further up the shore. It too is a fishing community, with roots going back to the early 1500s, when the Portuguese, the French, and the English fished out of here. There are a lot of fine and well-kept homes in Renews. It's a pretty place on a fine midsummer's day. The people of Renews, like the people of Fairyland, are mainly of Irish descent. Their ancestors came here in the 1700s, but there were English settlers long before that. As we strolled about town, we didn't see much evidence of those early days. Then we spied an ancient cannon, probably from one of the batteries that the British maintained here till 1815. And on a rise bearing the interesting name Midnight Hill, we came upon this grotto set among the trees and rocks. Apparently, in the early days, when it was against the law to be a practicing Roman Catholic, the Irish settlers would gather at this rock at midnight for secret mass. Hence this sacred spot and the name Midnight Hill. About 100 years ago, Renews had nearly doubled today's population. Hard times forced many to move away. Times are better today in the news, especially if you're young and carefree. Renews has always been regarded as one of the best places in Newfoundland for fish. Boats and fishermen used to flock here from all over the shore to join the resident fishermen who've been there for generations. Oh. The young codtong cutters of Renews are an eager bunch to be sure. Their knives are flashing every time a boat pulls into the wharf. And they've got their production techniques all figured out too. They have the technology. Rubber clothes, a sharp knife, and an empty salt beef tub. It's a favorite pastime here on the Renews Wharf in summertime. And they can do all right, too, in a summer like this. Cod tongues are still a delicacy all over Newfoundland. It's been a good summer here in Renews. Good landings, good prices. The season was a bit late in starting, but now the boats are beginning to make up for lost time. We arranged to go out fishing the next morning with Jim Dunn and his crew. left early in the morning. They wanted to be on the fishing grounds at first light of day. Up till now, the sea has been kind. They've landed a lot of fish. This is the tail end of the trap fishery. The 
sun climbs out of the eastern sea. It looks like a good day brewing. But clear skies mean nothing to a fisherman. Wind and tide are all that count. The Dunn brothers size up the situation and decide the tide is far too strong. They won't be able to haul this morning. Well, since we're all out here, would Land and Sea like to cruise around for a while to see if we could find somebody trawling? Sure we would. Away we steam. The tower of steam and a flashing tail told us we had company on the fishing grounds. A whale out chasing Cape Town. Many fishermen here use feather bait on their trawls. We hopped aboard Don Cal's boat to see how it was done. That's a nice one, Don. Yeah, if you get a few like that, you do all right. The mostly bigger fish you get now is... The past couple of days is a nice run of fish, but uh, every now and again you strike the small stuff. So I suppose you take the good with the bad. I suppose it's great not to have to bother with bait, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, this is great because uh, you just put them out and you leave them the whole year and come out and run them and that's all the battery you have with them. You make those hooks yourself, don't you? Yeah, in the wintertime. Yeah, anyway, yeah. It was late for everything. We were, uh, we must be a month behind selling fish compared to last year. Yeah. I think June the 6th, I sold my first fish last year. And this year, it was in July. I think it was sick and charged something like that, right? You gotta make up for last time. Oh, gee. Oh, well, since then, I've got about, well, I'd say about 35,000, I suppose, so. That's a beautiful one, eh? Can we see the hooks now when you take it out? Yeah. He was well hooked. But now the hook is not even damaged. No, the hook is uh, this kind, right? Clean as a wish. Can you hold it there for a second so we can see it? Like again, again, right? That's a piece of rope, really, isn't it? That's all a piece of red rope and a bit of tape on it. Sometimes we burn them. Yeah, okay. Or tape, and you can tape them, right? Last year we had them done with, uh, with picture wire. It was too hard on the hands. When right. you're picking the fish off, the ends of the wire stick on your fingers, right? So that was a learning experience. Day you have the, the year, Don? This year, uh, 2,400. 2,400 pounds. Yeah. Well, some guys have to do them better than that. The high is 28. Although they had two shears with two people, but uh, even so, right? Still a good day. You don't mind fishing at all? Oh, no, I like it. Because uh, at something like this, while fish is here, it doesn't matter if there's five in the boat. You don't understand the amount of fish. You don't contribute to anything, right? The Dunn brothers took us back to Renews. Soon they too would take up their traps and begin trawling. It was the end of July, and the fish were beginning to move off the trap berths. On the way back, we came upon the Chidleys, another Renews crew, out making a haul not far from home. Still a bit of fish around, but they all knew the trap fishery wouldn't last much longer. But nobody would complain. All the inshore fishermen in Renews enjoyed a good fishery this year. In Fermuse, just down the road, things haven't been as rosy. Over the years, the fish plant, which depends heavily on offshore fish, has been bouncing from buyer to buyer and has been plagued by closures and layoffs. Thanks to an abundance of fish all along the shore, some workers found jobs processing fish in other communities. 
others have gone to sea on draggers, and a few have created work for themselves in servicing the fleet of gill netters that now fish the virgin rocks a hundred miles offshore. These boats go through a lot of nets. There's a constant demand for new ones and for repairs on those that have been damaged. Some families have taken advantage of the situation. In fact, a small industry has been born here in Fermuse. We were told the Ryan family was involved in net making, so we tracked them down. They weren't hard to find. There were nets strung everywhere from the front garden down past the house and on out into the shed. And everyone was busy, outside and in. How did this family become involved in this business? Well, Peter Ryan had injured his back at sea and couldn't go out and boat anymore. So he decided to train his family in the art of net making to see if they can make a dollar that way. Mary, his wife, once worked in the fish plant. But she'd taken to this like a duck to water, and so have the others. The gamble has paid off. Is there a good demand now for nets like that? Mm, well, there's more than we can keep off it right now. There's an awful lot of boats out for fishing. If you had enough now to, uh, to keep it going. We can put through here, and they're putting through between 50 and 60 nets every week. But there's a big demand for phone every day looking for nets to be repaired, nets to buy. You know, if you had some way of getting into it to make up the gear. Yeah. So you had to teach your family how to do this, huh? Yeah, yeah. I've teached the woman how to slice and stuff like that. And Bradley and a few more from there. And how's it coming along there? No, oh, they're doing good, they're really good. Yeah, for the first year of have been Ten nets a day. Well, Mary, I suppose a few years ago, he didn't think you'd be at this. No, I didn't. You, you picked up pretty fast, though. Faster than the men, I won't tell you that. Yeah? <laughs> women, yes. I say women are better at this than the men. Yeah. yeah. Do you like working on it? Loves it. Loves it. Loves it. Yeah. Is there much to it? I mean, do you... Nah, not much. Getting used to it is, like, you know, doing the, the different knots now and the splice. I'm learning how to splice now and, and eh? Yeah. It's time consuming for me because I have to try to keep house too. I ain't try to keep everything going, like, you know. And do the cooking and the bacon. And mine won't even eat baker's bread. They have to have their homemade bread. So I was like, wait, night time and 11 and 12 o'clock and night bacon bread. <laughs> now we're doing this. But you like it out here? Loves it. Loves it. The Ryan family will continue making nets as long as the boats keep covering the virgin rocks with gill nets. Soon the cod trap fishery was over all along the southern shore. Here in Fairyland, a few traps were still in the water, but landings had fallen off and the fish were scattering. It was time to take the traps ashore, get the trawls ready. Another fishery was about to begin. We found Fonce Cavanaugh getting his trawl ready and counting his blessings. It had been a good trap voyage. Well, it's like this, Dave. I'm happy. We've got a million dollars that's kind of use for. But I'm satisfied with what we've done. And I think everybody here is pretty well the same way. 